All right, I uh, call together the January 13th, 2020 uh, Minneapolis City Planning Commission meeting. Uh, my name is Sam Rockwell. I serve as president of the Planning Commission. I'm joined today by Commissioners Brown, uh, Kogel, Coleman, Lupke Pierre, Schrader, Olson, and Kronzer. Uh, our first order of business is to approve the minutes from the December 9th uh, Minneapolis City Planning Commission meeting. Uh, do I have a motion? So moved. A second? second? Motion and a second. Uh, any discussion? All in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Uh, next, we will hear a report out from our Committee of the Whole meeting. Vice President Luke Pierre. Um, yes, we have uh, a motion to approve land sales for the Missing Middle Pilot Program as well as 3658 Emerson Avenue North and 4146 Fremont Avenue North and found them consistent. Very good. Sorry, getting used to these new microphones. Um, uh, great. Uh, next up, we will organize our... Uh, actually, you know what? First, let's do a, uh, a motion to take that uh, Committee of the Whole report out as a motion to approve. Do I have a second? A motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Any opposed? All right, next order of business is to organize the agenda for this meeting. Uh, for those in the audience, I will walk through the agenda um, as we uh, list off an item. If you wish to speak on that item, please raise your hand, make yourself known. Otherwise, we may place that item on our consent agenda. Uh, with no discussion. First item is the family partnership at 1527 East Lake Street, 3013 to 3037 Bloomington Avenue, and 3010 to 3048 16th Avenue South in Ward 9. Is anyone here to speak on item number one? Seeing no one, we'll place item number one on consent. Item number two is Northeast Bank ATM at 77 Broadway Street Northeast in Ward 3. Is anyone here to speak on that item? See no one will place item number two on consent. Item number three, Streetwear Building, 1010 South 7th Street and 601 10th Avenue South, Ward 3 and 6. Is anyone here to speak on item number three? Seeing no one will place item number three on consent. Item number four is 2017 and 2019 and a half 2nd Avenue South and Ward 10. Is anyone here to speak on item number four? Place item number four on consent. Item number five is two. 70 Hennepin Avenue Tower, 250 Hennepin Avenue in Ward 3. Is anyone here to speak on that item? Place item number five on consent. Item number six is 3017, 3021, and 3025 East Day McCaska Parkway in Ward 10. Is anyone here to speak on item number six? Place item number six on consent. Item number seven is 2914, 30th Avenue South in Ward 2. Is anyone here to speak on that item? So no one will place item number seven on consent. Item number eight uh, is the Gardens of Bryn Mawr, 2800 Wyzetta Boulevard North in Ward 7. We will continue item number eight uh, to the January 27th, 2020 meeting. Uh, item number nine is 700 Central uh, Phase 2 Apartments, 708 Central Avenue Northeast, 119 7th Street Southeast, and 123 7th Street Southeast in Ward 3. Is anyone here to speak on item number 9? So no one. We'll place item number 9 on consent. Uh, item number 10, self-storage, 1718 Washington Avenue North and 217 18th Avenue North in Ward 5. Is anyone here to speak on item number 10? Item number 11, we will discuss... And item number 12 is a zoning code text amendment in all wards related to park dedication fee and definition of affordable housing. Is anybody here to speak on item number 12? We will place item number 12 on consent. So our agenda as amended is uh, we will discuss item number 11. On consent are items number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 9, 10, and 12. We will continue item number 8. Commissioners, do I have a motion to approve the agenda as amended? We have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. Any opposed? The motion carries. Uh, next, I will open the public meeting on the consent agenda. Uh, does anybody wish to speak 
about items on the consent agenda. Seeing none, I will close the public hearing on the consent agenda. Uh, commissioners, do we have a motion to approve the consent agenda? Second. We have a motion and a second uh, to improve this consent agenda. All in favor say aye. Any opposed? That motion carries. Uh, can I get a motion to continue item number eight to the January 27th, 2020 City Planning Commission meeting? With motion and a second on item number eight. Uh, continuance, uh, all in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Uh, with that, we will uh, discuss item number 11. And staff is Aaron Hanauer. The floor is yours, Aaron. Thank you. Right. So, commissioners, um, we have additional information submitted by the applicant that I think has been passed around. But for the commutator foundry rehabilitation and new construction project, an exciting project in the North Loop neighborhood, bring in a boutique hotel and ground floor commercial to the intersection of 1st Street and 2nd Avenue North. What you have in front of you is just focused on the area way vacation application. And the applicant's looking to open up a previous stairway that you can see in this photo from the late 19th century, early 20th century, to put in a, um, a second means of accessing a basement or a, um, a, a basement level establishment. The approximate vacation is three and a half feet wide by 21 feet long. And as I mentioned, looking to install an entrance along 2nd Avenue North. In the, in the additional information you received, you, the applicant is committed to installing for, for public safety reasons a railing along where that entrance would be. I think I have a better image here, such as this. A gate, and then there's there's concerns from Public Works and CPED about just, uh, and I'll get to in a minute, but a textured sidewalk to help delineate where, for those that might be um, visually impaired, where the, your, this where the public sidewalk is located. Lighting in this area way and committed to regular snow removal. But allowing the stairway in the right of way is not allowed by city ordinance via an easement, encroachment, or otherwise. And for those reasons, Public Works and CPED are, are recommending de denial of the application. It's important uh, for, just to elaborate a little more, to have a six foot pedestrian clear and straight zone and so when you have these jogs, this is not an ideal situation to make it easier for those to travel uh, for all abilities. Also helps with snow removal, and we don't want to limit the opportunities for communication, transportation, and utility mains with a non-straight right-of-way. There's a letter of support from the neighborhood that, that you have received. They support the request since it restores a historical element of the building, does not impact required sidewalk width, and include some greenery along the sidewalk. And uh, my colleague, Jeff Handerlin from Public Works is here to help answer questions that may arise. Commissioners, are there any questions of Aaron? Yes, Matt. Yes, Aaron, I just wanted to clarify. So the sidewalk, uh, as proposed, does not get any narrower than six feet at any point. It's just a matter of the jogs and not having a continuous six foot path and and maybe you could clarify it is it exactly six feet at, at its narrowest point um there may be points where it's a little wider it, it would it is my understanding that public works would not support anything narrower than six feet in width at any point uh commissioner Kronzer. yeah just looking at the plan that we have aaron um i see the stair in blue highlighted what is the white space directly to the that's south. I may have the applicant um, help inform me of what that proposal is, but um, 
Gentlemen, the that area in the in the white. More of that. We need we need any uh, communication at the microphone, please. Sorry about that. For the record, yeah, come on. Up. Just a quick answer, right? And then we'll come. Andrew Commerce with Commutator LLC, the applicant. Thank you for um, hearing us today. We'll come back with more comments later, but just to answer the immediate question, there were uh, historically two area ways. One uh, on the top with the blue circling it that had a stairway in it. The other with actually egress windows into the basement. Well, historically speaking, it would be, and you know, user speaking, it would be wonderful to also restore that in uh, respect to you know, the effort to get even just the stairway approved, we've limited the application for vacation to just the north or blue uh, outline. So what is actually physically in that space? Uh, you know, we'll show you some pictures and things when we come up so you can see now as well as what it will look like um, in the future, but it would just be part of the traditional landscape of the sidewalk. Very good. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Lupke Pierre. Um, yeah, so Aaron, a um, couple questions. One was, what is the width of the sidewalk then to the left of the blue rectangle then as proposed? This would be, it would be a minimum of six feet. So is that, is that what it currently is shown as, a six feet, or is that's, it? That's correct. And then, because the green strip looks like unnecessarily tiny, uh, like is it like a foot when it tapers down past a little curb cut? I think there's an, um, uh, I stand to be corrected, but there's there's discussions on with that bulb out and and the reconstruction of that sidewalk. Some varying uh, possibilities of, of that width. And then if the if if this gets um, if we vote uh, in accordance with staff recommendation to deny it, the blue rectangle and the non highlighted historically egress window to air access thing. Um, what is there a proposed? Uh, outline or, or design for what the sidewalk and um, green area would look like uh, in comparison? Uh, does it jog like it does currently on the proposed or? I did I try to, and I, I had some computer problems of the, okay. Um, this is the approved PDR plan sheet for the site. So it would be um, I hope I'm answering your question of just that straight clearance with some green space. So it would widen the strip of green space along the street, though, is what we're seeing. If, if it was denied? Yeah. Correct. Okay. A little bit. Thank you, Aaron. Commissioner Coleman, is that a... I just want to make sure I understand completely what has just been said, and I appreciate the questions, those two questions that I had also. If I understand correctly... The jog that is shown in the yellow color on the sidewalk schematic will not occur if the area way vacation is denied. This jog will not occur if the area way vacation is denied. It would be a straight, uh, maybe straight. So the sidewalk would go all the way to the building frontage? Yes. Thank you. Commissioners, any other questions? Uh, yes, Commissioner Schrader. Just a quick clarification. You mentioned that the um, Public Works would not approve it if it was under six feet. Now it is six feet, so is Public Works approving this, un not approving this? Like, and this packet, it says deny. I just want to be clear on that. Yeah, I think. Why don't we have our Public Works rep come up and say what you want to say? Good afternoon, commissioners. My name is Jeff Handel, and I'm a principal professional engineer in the Transportation Engineering Design Division of the Department of Public Works. So the Public Works and CPED recommendation is to deny the vacation that would keep the, um, the width and alignment of the sidewalk even. So um, the, the width of the sidewalk is important. The width of the entire pedestrian zone, including the sidewalk and the boulevard, is also important for multiple reasons. And um, also the straight alignment helps um, you know, people with various abilities navigate the as pedestrians. Thank you. 
Commissioner Lipke Pierre. Yeah, I have a question then. So um, are there, just related to that curb cut and future plans for, for this portion of the street, are there any plans in the works to reconfigure the public realm there or is it we decide it option A, option B, and that's what it's probably in, gonna be for the foreseeable future? So uh, thanks, thanks for that question, Commissioner. Um, there, you know, there actually is a public project underway, a pedestrian improvement project that's um, recently done work in that area um, at the sidewalk intersection. The development project, um, you know, could be an opportunity to enhance the the um, right of way also if they're agreeable, um, and of course. Uh, streets and public infrastructure only last so long. So eventually, um, you know, there's no street reconstruction currently programmed there, but eventually, the, of course, the entire street will get reconstructed. And do you think that that reconstruction will impact the little curb cut parking area that's there or no? Since that is tapered and that affects the width that we're questioning right now, if that were to go away, would that, it seems as though that might impact what we're looking at? Mm, I, I guess I'm not. I'm not sure if I understand. Well, if you look at the drawing, the the curb bumps out to meet the corner, which would imply that there's some sort of indented parking or pull off area there at that location. But if that wasn't intended to stay, and instead the street was straightened to fall straight down from the corner, it would be a larger width to work with. We wouldn't be looking at this toothpick sliver of green next to six feet next to a stairwell. It'd be a wider expanse. So I'm wondering if that's something that's in the works for the next five years, let's say, that it seems like that would be something we would, would want to know about. I think to clarify, you're asking about whether the curb line is intended to remain where yes, the current exactly. curb line is for the foreseeable future or whether that curb line might move. Okay, so thanks for that clarification. You. And, um, you know, my, I, I could be wrong, but my understanding is that the curb line was straight and through some combination of our pedestrian improvement project and the development project, the bump out that you see on the plan or the curb extension that you see on the plan is going to be installed. Thank you. Commissioners, any further comments? All right, thank you very much. Uh, with that, I will open the public hearing and ask the applicant to step forward, introduce yourselves. Uh, good afternoon, commissioners. I, I'm David Wilson. Uh, I'm one of the three partners in Commutator LLC, uh, and I'm the founder of Green Minneapolis, which is a nonprofit focused actually on street greening and pedestrian realm in downtown Minneapolis. Andrew Commerce with the Commutator LLC. Yep. And John Gross with the Commutator LLC. Very good. Feel free to uh, fill us in more if there were information you. Great. Thank you. While I'm, I'm doing sure. this, I'm just going to ask Andrew. Andrew, could you put this up on the uh, yeah. screen here? That'd be. So, commissioners, first, uh, I would like to thank all of you for taking time uh, to consider our request. Uh, very much appreciate it. Um, I would also share that this is a very important consideration uh, for our project. Um, the retail space is a key component in how this building uh, works, both uh, from a financial perspective, but more importantly, how this building uh, re-energizes uh, the neighborhood, which is a big goal of ours. Um, we plan to use the uh, historic stone cellar that is uh, in, you know, below ground of this space as a retail space. Uh, there are you know, really two key reasons why we are requesting this vacation. Uh, the first one is a, an important functional reason, and that is as egress. Uh, and the second reason is a commercial consideration. For us to use that space as retail, it's really important that there be a sidewalk access to it. Uh, we are planning on using that space as a wine bar, tapas bar type of space, and it frankly is being designed to be for the neighborhood as opposed to hotel guests. And so without this exterior stairway, there would be no way of getting into the space 
without going through the building, so entering the hotel and going into the building. Uh, and so it would really not be a viable space. Um, the other thing that we want to just share, and, and we do have the, uh, the president of the North Loop Neighborhood Association here to speak about this, but uh, we're working very hard with local uh, designers. So Snow Krylik has designed the building. Uh, 10 by 10, which is a North Loop based architectural firm, is doing all of the public realm green space. Uh, we have very substantial green space planned for the sidewalks. And we are really doing this because we're trying to make sure that when this project is completed, this becomes the, the center of North Loop for the neighborhood. Uh, we're actually calling the lobby of the hotel the living room for North Loop. So this is not a kind of an inward focused building for hotel guests. We're really trying to make this an ex externally facing building. So this retail access from the sidewalk is important. And we believe that this will frankly bring vibrancy to the sidewalk, to the street, uh, and improve uh, accessibility and safety. More eyes, more people on the street, more pedestrian traffic. Um, <clears throat> One of the things that was mentioned, and I do want to clarify, we actually are planning on eight feet of clear pedestrian zone. Uh, six feet is the minimum, um, but uh, we are uh, actually have designed eight feet. Uh, there is a jog, however, I would like to just call out that the current conditions, there is currently a jog. So the uh, photograph that is up there, uh, the stairway is actually immediately below that wooden platform and railing. Uh, and actually the stairway is still there. So when you go to the cellar, um, it is open and you can actually see the entire stairwell. There are no utilities running through there and there's just about that much concrete sitting on top. And then there is that wooden platform sitting on top of that. So that condition of a jog would continue. However, what we have uh, proposed is that we really believe in pedestrian realm. Uh, we respect it, we value it. So we have proposed that we would actually fund a large bump out that you saw in that earlier diagram. Uh, and that would, frankly, it would uh, replace all of the sidewalk square footage that would be vacated in that three foot seven by 21 foot space. Uh, and then we are doing substantial greening uh, of all of the sidewalk space all the way around our building. Uh, a couple of other comments that we wanted to highlight. This is a historic stairway. You, you saw the image of the, uh, of the 18, I think it's an 1880s uh, photograph. Uh, this was a hotel building originally, uh, and that was a, a public stairway that was used for the building. Uh, and so we believe that what we're doing is we are opening up the sidewalk and restoring the stairway that's already there. Uh, we're just taking this, the concrete slabs out. Uh, we uh, also wanted to highlight that um, you know we're very committed that this will be a, an accessible space for all. So the uses of that downstairs space will be open to the public during our normal operating hours. Uh, and we're designing a, a first class hotel. So the maintenance of the railings and all of that sort of thing is gonna be top notch. Uh, and so I think that's everything I wanted to highlight. Anything from my partners before? Um, no, I think, I think just a clarification. Can we, uh, would it be possible to go back to the computer? I can that? probably try and there there we go. Go. what do you want to see? Yeah, just just uh, going back to that one for sure, just so that we're clear that this uh, yellow zone next to the blue, which is our stairwell, is uh, eight feet wide. So it's a very tremendously wide uh, sidewalk to begin with. And um, we feel that the pathway is going to jog and ebb and flow a little anyhow. If you look lower in the diagram, we have plantings and seating and tree on the left-hand side, but that whole pathway kind of flows gracefully. It's it's not just a straight linear thing. It's kind of a, a actually a beautifully broken up uh, urban space because there's kind of green on, on one side, then it weaves, and then there's green on the other, and then there's a stairwell. So... Just that that's clear, but at that stairwell point, 
It's eight feet wide from the edge of the staircase uh, to the area that shows the sidewalk. And that, again, kind of the amount of encroachment we're taking, we're giving way more back in terms of that bump out, um, which I don't know if we can put landscaping out there, but if we're allowed to, we would have it out there as well. The last thing I would say is that we uh, have reviewed this. We gave a presentation to the North Loop Neighborhood Association, and you saw the letter that came out of that. We actually have um, uh, Tim Vilso, who is the uh, president of the Neighborhood Association here, uh, and we've also reviewed this with the uh, city council member for the third ward, uh, council member Fletcher, who um, supports our request on this. Um, Tim, did you want to just come up and say anything? Uh, uh, or, or maybe we'll have we'll much. open up I'm sorry. Uh, for next. Okay. No, that's all right. I want to give um, before we hear from other speakers, commissioners, a chance to ask you guys questions. Sorry, yes. And I know there's one here, so commissioner, or, do you have anything else you want to say before? No questions. Thanks. Perfect, uh, Commissioner Loop Capier. Yeah, so just a quick question about that additional railed area that was historically uh, lights or windows. Um, is that needed for you guys for light and air or is it also needed as additional egress for some other portion of the basement? No, it is not needed and it is not currently in our plan because it is currently, you know, public right away. So we would not, as it stands, be allowed to kind of create that area away. Yeah, that diagram, frankly, I think is an old version. We decided not to request um, that that space vacated. So the only space we're requesting vacation of is the stairwell. So in reality, the the sidewalk that we might be looking at might actually not jog as much. It might be even wider at that point. Correct. Yeah. Okay, Correct. thanks. Uh, Commissioner Sweezy and then Commissioner Crosser. Thank you. Um, Will there be another way to get into this restaurant from inside the hotel? Yes, there is an interior stair, um, so there is another way. And you know, there, you know, right now there are two for fire code. We need to have two exits, and so this would be our second exit. But also, it would be elevator accessible. Yes. Yep, inside. inside. Yeah, absolutely. It would be yeah. fully accessible. Okay, I'm I'm just reading the materials that that you submitted with it and. Um, it says that the project's success requires the stairway, and this is the only option to achieve the public good. I mean, I understand the desire to have the stairway in the entrance from the outside, but you know, people will if if this is denied, people will still be able to get into this place through the the hotel and the living room of the North Loop and all of that. I I doubt we would uh, build the space out if it's denied. It would probably be used for storage because just based on the retail experience, so my partner John has several restaurants in the city, uh, it, it downstairs uh, eating establishments don't do well if there's no windows, no light, no door access. So we probably would not do anything down there. I see, thank you. Commissioner Crosser. Yeah, I had three questions and I'll have one. So that's good, thank you commissioners. Um, about, you know, going south, there's this area called unit pavers, and there's a parking meter pay station where the, the tan sidewalk jogs. Uh, is that unit pavers all the way to the curb? It's shown, it's, it's shown in, in green here, but other drawings seem to suggest that those unit pavers go to the curb. It says P1 unit pavers. Yep. That is meant as an entrance to the hotel. So um, whether there's a paving selected that allows grass to grow through it or whether it is just paving uh, is yet to be determined. But the objective there was to have um, you know, a, a different paving for the main entrance into the hotel. OK. Uh, is that also true where the pay station would be? Because that grass won't survive three days. If I believe the designers were talking about request. I, I believe the designers were going to work with the city to request moving the pay station up a little bit so it wasn't right at the entrance, but that isn't finalized either. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yeah. And, and just related, sir, to, to your question. So there, you know, we are planning a canopy there above the front entrance. So it'll be kind of a, a classic hotel entrance there. So when you're kind of thinking about what is the pedestrian realm going to feel like there, uh, we hope to have the ability to have some large planters by the door, you know, uh, to kind of warm up that space. There will be a canopy. Uh, and so you know, 
you know, the, the, these are preliminary. We actually have some more advanced designs that we're working through with 10 by 10 on the pedestrian uh, landscape, which we'd be happy to come back and discuss with all of you folks if that would be helpful as it relates to this, this request. Commissioner Schrader. Sure, thanks. Just a couple of questions about the bump, ups, bump outs. So they're not currently there. No, sir. Okay, and maybe you could give a little bit of background. It's because of what I'm hearing is that it sounds like that was a conversation with Public Works to try and mitigate some of the bumper, the uh, pedestrian right away. Um, it's something we propose that we we believe would be good for the pedestrian realm. It shortens the walking distance across the streets, and we're trying to frankly encourage a more pedestrian realm in that space. Uh, and we think uh, as there's more retail opening up there and more apartments and that sort of thing, it's important. Uh, and we frankly want more sidewalk space. Uh, we do have a restaurant planned on the main floor on the uh, first street side, and we'll be requesting a permit to have a sidewalk cafe. So we're envisioning a very kind of active uh, sidewalk scape there. Uh, and luckily the sidewalks are wide in that, in that location, and so uh, we have the ability to really have a very lively pedestrian realm there. So just to, to follow up on that, I mean, if you've been in conversations with staff about this, is there, and they're still not recommending it, what, is there some other bump out that needed to happen that you did not see in our would work in the business plan, or can maybe explain that a little bit? I, I would hesitate to um, represent the city. The, the staff have been incredibly helpful on this project. I think they share our vision for what we want to accomplish. Um, you know, I personally believe the concerns are, does this somehow set a precedent um, to vacate, you know, this three foot by 21 foot wide space? Because uh, that has been a question that we, you know, have heard several times. And, and from our perspective, we believe that because this, this is historically a, a staircase that has been there, that it doesn't set a precedent. We're restoring something. Uh, that actually in, in our HPC reviews, they actually approved us moving. They were thrilled that we were going to be bringing this back. And so that was, has been kind of the key concern that we understood from the city uh, it was it was more this precedent. And I do, you know, I care very much about uh, pedestrian realm and the jog. This space is a little bit, is going to be a little bit unique, though, because there's going to be the front entrance for our hotel. There are going to be, uh, hopefully, if we get permits, sidewalk cafes, uh, and we're going to be doing a lot of street greening. And so it's not going to be a place where we're going to expect people to be, you know, zooming by. I think it's going to be a place, hopefully, people will linger. Uh, we will certainly make sure that it's extremely accessible so that people who are handicapped, et cetera, have no, you know, issues going through the pedestrian space. But we, we're trying to make something special, quite frankly, in the space, and we think it's the right neighborhood and the right site to do it. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chair. Maybe I can get uh, the questions answered from staff after they're done. Perfect. Uh, Commissioner Lupe Pierre. Okay, so I just kind of raised a few more questions for me. Uh, one was, so you, so you proposed these, this corner bump out. Are any of the other three corners at this intersection, do they have that same bump out? I believe, yes, and exactly across the street. So on the west corner, it is bumped out. This but not on the other the, two corners? Uh, I believe the two corners to the west both have the bump outs. I don't believe on the east side of... Uh, and the, they, all, all three? Yeah. So this is the only one that doesn't? Okay, so this is, okay, bringing that into consistency. Okay, and then I noticed on your lower level plan, um, is that storage 12 feet under the sidewalk? Is that what I'm seeing? Um, like 12 foot 3 inches on a sheet, let's see. It's from Snow Cry, like it's a floor plan lower level P1. Is that... It looks as though it extends under there. Is that accurate? Is it this diagram, uh, Commissioner, that you're referring to? It's floor plans. No, okay. Floor plans. So no, it's the, the low, level below this. Okay. So uh, you're asking, is it storage? Um, it looks as though your stairway is there, and then beyond that, under the sidewalk, there's storage. So I'm just wondering if that's accurate. Or something. It says bar, some, it's teeny tiny font, so it's hard for me to read it see what it says. But... Yeah, the storage may be where they had the light wells that Andrew was talking about. It's space that just exists under there. That's yeah. But my question is: yeah. is that your space? Oh, uh, I mean, it, it, I think what you're asking is: is it storage or is it what David described? I'm asking whether Public Works has the rights to di to dictate what happens in an existing basement space. 
underneath the mm. sidewalk. We believe they do. I mean, the, that space, uh, it's not inside of our inside of our lot line. Well, I don't know. It's you outside. have a door to it shown on your floor plan. So I'm just, I'm just, maybe yeah. you could, Aaron, can yeah. you pull up that a sheet lot of this, so they can look at it? Yeah, yeah. Let, let's yeah. pull up that sheet. Because I'm, Cause I'm sure really I'm curious sure. about this, because this um, is kind of interesting. So, yeah. Well, it, 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 it's actually quite fat. When you go down there, uh, you can see where our building ends. And then there is just a big void and where the open stairwell was. And then, actually, the void continues. And I think it might have been coal storage down there or something like that. That might be what you're seeing. There's another large void underneath the this sidewalk. One? Nope, one more down. One more? It's, um, it's in the staff report. Or in, is it yeah. page 14 you're looking at, Commissioner? And I know we've seen this in other buildings in the warehouse district um, where they had space under the public sidewalk. I'll get it. Yeah. Besides, so one thing I can tell you for sure, besides the stairwell space that we're asking the vacation for, we are not planning on using any other space under the sidewalk. So if there is something that says storage there, we are not intending on renovating that space. We would be sealing up our, um, our cellar wall in that area, and it would not be open to the, the public uh, right of way underneath the sidewalk. Mm -hmm. I'm just, that's interesting. Okay, anyway, just from a, just curious who maintains it, the, the, the roof of it. Um, so then my other question was related to um, a question Commissioner Sweezy had related to whether or not this is a, a life or death sort of thing. Um, do you need this stairwell or not? In my initial reading of your of the, the report, it, in, it seemed to me as though you were saying this was required as a second means of egress for fire code. But now I'm hearing that, no, it's not, that you probably just would opt to not use it. So which is it? Is this required as egress because it's the second certain distance from the first means of egress for fire safety? Or is this something where it just is one of those, it'd be nice to have, but what the heck? I mean, which is it? Um, I would say it's the former. It's really important. We have certainly done some what if. So what if we can't do this? Um, our architects have said, well, we could figure out how to blast a hole through the stone foundation into the underground parking garage and then figure out some sort of second egress through there. It sounds kind of complicated and, and not ideal if people are trying to get out of a fire, so we aren't sure that that would really be something that we could do. So we've looked at some of those secondary options, but really what, what drives this is what sort of retail space would be uh, viable to get rents from if there are no windows and there's no sign. And unfortunately, we just, that's not our concern. No, th here, that, so that's yeah. our question to, for ourselves, which right. is how would we use it? And right. we've come up with, you know, there aren't very many examples that we have ever seen of an underground cellar space with no windows and no uh, exit to the sidewalk mm -hmm. that is working well. And so we probably wouldn't spend the money to restore. It's got beautiful stone walls, so we, but it's going to take a lot of money to restore it. Mm -hmm. And that would require then that you actually have some return on that. And we yeah. probably would just end up not doing that. Yeah, this is the that. Yep. Mm -hmm. I have a pencil here. So are you talking about? Move your this pencil area? straight up. Straight up. There you go. Okay, see the stairway right, right above your pencil? Like up, 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 up. Here. Up. There you go. Is that the one in question that we're talking about right now? Yes. Okay, so the thing to the left of your pencil, that's what my question's about. Because it looks as though you extend 12 foot 3 inches into the public right away. So I'm. Yeah, that space exists right now, but it is still public right away and still would remain public right away under our proposal. So even, so on your deed, it actually, your building extends in, into a space that you don't own. Mm -hmm. No, on the deed we bought the building. Got that. Uh, city continues to own the other part, part of your own. building. Okay, just curious. I'm just curious. It's very where unusual. The... No, we had a project in St. Paul. Mm -hmm. I used to work for Art Space for nine years, uh, nonprofit for artists, live work space. And the original project had this areaway that went right into Prince Street, right by the uh, Saints Stadium, and it had like utilities for the building and everything in there. It was critical to the building, but. We didn't know it at the city. Mm, interesting. Well, thank you. to happen. Commissioners, any other questions for the applicant at this time? All right, seeing none, thank you very much. And uh, Commissioner Schrader, do you have questions for staff right now? Yeah, just kind of wanted to follow up on kind of some of the bump outs. If that uh, negotiation came through and 
Public Works and CBER are still not approving it. I wanted to see if that was an issue of inches or feet, if that was something that we'd, we'd never approve it, or if it was something that with other revisions we could get there, if that makes sense. I think it would, if I understand the question, Council Member Schitter, of having any means of egress and then that stairwell within the right of way would not be supported. Uh, and then the other part is, I guess, um, and please uh, push back on me if I didn't answer the question, but then the site plan that you have here is a is, is approved via PD, preliminary development review without the stairwell, so the project w would go forward. But I know from talking with the applicant how important it was to have this proposal that you see in front of you. Okay. No, thanks. That helps. All right. Uh, I will open the public hearing for everybody else who wishes to come testify. Please come forward. State your name and address for the record. Thank you. Good evening, Commissioners. Tim Biltso. I'm President of the North Loop Neighborhood Association, 730 North 4th Street, Minneapolis. Um, it was great hearing all your, your comments because at the North Loop Neighborhood Association, when this was brought before us, and, you, and our letter of approval or support, I should say, is in, in the packet. We had many of the same questions that you did, particularly around the sidewalk. Um, right now in the North Loop or in the last year, if you've been through there, um, there are a lot of um, cones and a lot of work and a lot of stuff going on in the North Loop because pedestrian friendly and pedestrian right of way is very important for us and clear access is very important. So when we saw this, that was a question we asked too. Uh, I know the applicant has, has uh, uh, proposed doing a bump out, moving that bump out further uh, back towards, you know, I guess I don't know if it's west or whatever to, to you know, increase the, the width of the sidewalk. We would support that. I think that's a great idea. Most of the, of the pedestrian or most of the corners in the North Loop in this part of the North Loop um, in 2019 have been completely redone and they've all been bumped out. And that project is still going on, uh, will be going on into 2020. So the North Loop right now versus what it was, say, uh, two years ago, is incredible with pedestrian-friendly sidewalks and more trees. This project uh, sits in the epicenter of the North Loop's economic area. And it, it's going to be such a great um, addition to that part of the North Loop and the access down as is proposed by the applicant is essential for it and we support it wholeheartedly. I think it's gonna be a great project, bringing a lot of folks in. Very similar to the parlor, if you go on, on Washington Avenue and walk along the east side of Washington Avenue, the parlor has, has stairs there and all along Washington Avenue there are obstacles and whether it's trees and, and other things there and it functions very well, the parlor is very very popular and has access within the building and also through the stairwell. So um, one of the questions too that came up in the report, the staff report was uh, snow storage. And that was a question that we asked too, where's the snow gonna go with this? And because this is the front of their hotel, I can pretty much assure you that as with other hotels in the North Loop, uh, including the Ewing Hotel, the snow will be gone. The snow storage will not be an, an issue in this area. Um, so we support it. Um, we think it's a, a great addition and bring a, lot, a, a great business to the North Loop too, particularly in that part of the North Loop where there are a lot of restaurants. And we want people to be out on the streets walking in the North Loop. We have that now. This will only enhance that. So we're in support of that. I did read in the, um, in the staff report about Verizon saying no. Um, that has they need that, potentially need that for, for some of their utility work. Um, that has been an open area for the last 100 years, and Verizon's done very well without that. I can see that. I don't see the need for that going forward. So we do support it. We would love to have you approve it, and uh, I know the staff report is to deny it. We would ask you to support it uh, for the uh, economic vitality and just really the, the uh, uh, pedestrian-friendly and, um, and public, uh, I think, benefit of the area. So thank you for listening. Thank you very much. Is there anybody else wishing to testify today? Seeing none, I will close the public hearing. Commissioners, we have a single application before us, vacation. Uh, is there any further discussion or Commissioner Sweezy? 
I have a question either for Mr. Hanna or Ms. Holine about um, what is required here for findings. So in the staff report, it looks like um, we need to find, to deny this, we need to find that the area proposed is needed for a public purpose and is part of a transportation corridor? That's it? Yes, that's correct. So if we were to allow the vacation, we would have to find that one of those things basically wasn't true. And then finally, what is the role then? Um, it looks like this is covered also by an ordinance that doesn't allow for uh, reopening stairwells in the public right away. So what role does the existing law give us there on top of it? Um, I can refer to Aaron or Jeff Handelin on that piece of it as it's more of a public works ordinance. But um, you know, I think the staff report does lay it out pretty well that um, you know, there is a public transportation corridor um, or public need here for this portion of the sidewalk that ordinance doesn't really give us a lot of flexibility on. Commissioner Coleman. Yes, I have a question for public works staff. Um, there was a statement that was made by the downtown neighborhood association representative that Verizon said that they did not support this. And I think that's not quite accurate. From the staff report, it says Verizon noted that they have facilities in the area. That isn't a yes or no, in my opinion. Is that your observation also? Or your, do you agree with that statement? That's also, that statement is correct to the best of my knowledge, yes. Thank you. Kimberly, do you want to say that? No. Any, uh, Commissioner Kronzer. Is it possible to put conditions on a vacation? No, it is not. Any other questions or comments? Or would somebody like to start us off with a motion? Mr. Sweezy. Uh, yes, I will move uh, approval of the staff recommendation to deny the vacation um, in the area way adjacent to the building at 125 First Street North. Um, the reasons for that are basically the answers to the questions that I just asked. There doesn't seem to be any real authority to do this, to take this uh, property right away from the city. Um, I'm persuaded that there is a public purpose for it. And it's certainly on a sidewalk. And also we have um, instructions in our Sydney or city ordinances that um, this kind of thing is, is not, or is at least frowned on and in fact prohibited. Do we have a second? Is there a second to Commissioner Sweezy's motion? Seeing none, that motion fails. Would anybody like to offer an alternate motion? Commissioner Luke Pierre. Um, I guess I'm going to uh, move to approve the vacation to vacate the area um, with, uh, and, I'll, and I'll tell why I'm going to support that. Is there a second? second. There's a motion and a second. Uh, Commissioner Luke Pierre. Yeah. So just to speak to this really quickly, I think um, when I was reading through the different the different reasons, I um, and the director from Public Works. Um, noting that it's uh, the right-of-way isn't in the public interest. And I think that that's uh, narrowing it isn't in the public interest. I think that that's interesting because it isn't narrowing. Number, number one, it, it's it's widening, and it does create a jog, which I recognize as uh, something to be noted. But I, I also, when I walk around the city, there's a lot of places that jog. Like, I, I don't know very many sidewalks that are consistently straight throughout our whole city, especially as you get toward the warehouse district. One thing that I think, um, when I was going through it, it that it might be needed as a right of way for utilities. And I, in noting that there's already existing pretty much a room under there that's been there for a hundred plus years. And so far utilities hasn't accessed this fully accessible corridor to run stuff through it. It kind of makes me think that's a little bit of a hollow argument. Um, the consistent straight path. Again, I, I know plenty of places in the city where there's not a consistent straight path. And I am at least um, somewhat relieved to hear that it will be widened beyond the bare minimum. So at least it mitigates some of that. Um, 
less useful in the winter because of snow piles. I think that that's an area where public works can just lean really heavily on the owners to make sure that they're dealing with their snow removal and not creating an unsafe condition like they do for the rest of us in this city. Um, and dangerous for crime in the stairway, I think that was, um, again, it's in their best interest to make sure stuff doesn't happen, but there's lots of nooks and crannies. It's not necessarily a septic concern since there's so many uh, options for sites on it and with the the railing in front of it, the gate that prevents people from just falling down it, um, which is a safety gate that we would see in, in most projects in the city uh, in basement conditions. Um, I don't see that as much of a, of, a, of a concern. I did want to talk a little bit about precedent and the fact that it's in the historic district. I think um, if they were coming to us and requesting a new stairwell, I would be completely disinclined to offer it. The fact that it was existing and the fact that it's in a district that we noted uh, in our city is being important for being historic. It tells me this is different than other applications. I think um, when I think about the warehouse district in particular, I think about all those loading docks, which we won't allow people to slap onto sidewalks, yet we applaud them for people preserving them now and having access, even though the ramps are quite difficult, I would imagine, for anyone who is in a wheelchair or has mobility impairment issues. So I feel as though it's a unique situation and location in our city and I guess when I think about our historic district, I, sometimes I feel like some of our rules sanitize things so much. And one of the benefits to historic preservation is that it, cr it creates this little bit of grittiness to our city and interest and variety that we don't see elsewhere. So we're not gonna see all of a sudden every new building in the city wanting a stairwell in the public right away to get to a basement. But here it seems not only appropriate, but it is appropriate because it's historically had that. So I feel it's almost, it's almost we should support it more just because of the district it's in, the fact that it historically belonged there. And um, as a nod to the fact that that's what makes things special and unique in this city. And if we try to sanitize everything so it meets the same code, that's how we end up with teardowns and all these cookie cutter generic buildings getting put up that have no character. So I guess I'm supporting this because when we've looked at this in terms of it needs to be for a public purpose, safety is important, but I'm not buying the excuses as to why this isn't safe. I don't think that a jog is going to prevent somebody from, from navigating that sidewalk. It's a very generous jog. However, I would say that historic preservation and enhancing a historic district by restoring and quite frankly doing adaptive reuse is highly in the public interest. Um, as a city, we recognize that it is important to recognize our heritage, and this is, in my opinion, another way of doing that. So I think um, when, when I read the findings, it said that we need to find that the proposed vacation is needed for the public purpose. In my mind, the adaptive reuse and re reclamation of an existing stair opening is in the public best interest and a public purpose because it isn't negated by any safety concerns that I can actually see occurring. So if I can just try to summarize. So there is a, uh, a point that um, that some of the concerns, safety right away for utilities and width are addressed uh, by the design and that there is an affirmative public purpose in historic preservation and adaptive reuse as articulated in our uh, comprehensive plans and various city policies. Nice summary. Very good. Uh, is there any further discussion? Commissioner Brown. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I generally support the motion for the reasons that were stated. I did want to just clarify with staff that this uh, action is, in fact, a recommendation to the City Council um, as opposed to a final action. Is, is that correct? Okay. And it, it, uh, that, that makes me a little bit more comfortable just because I, I do have a concern if there is still a utility out there that's objecting to this and also the issue that Commissioner Sweezy raised related to uh, the city ordinance. I just want to make sure that um, this proposal um, works within city ordinance or if there's anything else that, that needs to be done. Uh, but otherwise, I, I support the motion. I would also add that um, adding street level activity in the form of retail uh, space in a location like this certainly advances our comprehensive plan goals. I, I feel that the sidewalk as proposed is adequate in width. Um, it's certainly wider than a lot of other sidewalks in this general area. Um, and, and the proposal will continue to meet our, our transportation needs. 
Commissioner Schrader. Uh, thank you. Just, uh, I also agree with Commissioner Brown. Um, I'll be supporting this for the reasons given, but I, I think because we can't attach conditions to this, um, I want to be really clear that one of the reasons I'm I'm supportive is because of the work uh, that's been done to increase the pedestrian realm. So I, I just encourage developers to continue to do that to address some of the questions that were raised here. You know, where are things going to go? How's the greenery going to work? How's this all going to flow as you're working that out? Commissioner Krauser. Thank you. I just wanted to speak to precedent for a second. Uh, we see projects all the time that want to vacate an alley and relocate an alley. Um, this vacation is not eliminating the sidewalk. It's, it's, it's modifying the sidewalk. Um, I, I don't see this as a precedent. This is a very site-specific condition with a site-specific solution. Um, if we held true to the staff recommendation, we would have not approved many vacations that Re realign alleys, and I've seen probably 20 of those in my time here. So I'd just like to add that to the record. Very good. Is that a comment down there or residual, residual potential comments? All right. Are there any further comments or discussion? Uh, with that, we have a motion and a second. Clerk, please call the roll. Brown? Aye. Coleman? Aye. Colville? Aye. Franzer? Aye. Lippier? Aye. Olson? Aye. Schrader? Aye. Sweezy? No. Seven to one. Very good. That motion carries. With that, our business on item number 11 and all public items on the agenda are uh, complete. Are there any updates and communications you wish to share, Kimberly? Um, yes, so we had one appeal from the December 9th Planning Commission meeting, which seems like it was a really, really long time ago. Um, that was on the 407 15th Avenue Southeast project, the Dinky Town mixed use at the McDonald's site there. Um, that went to the Zoning and Planning Committee last week and was continued two cycles to allow them some additional time to um, work on the design. Um, staff is working through the appointment process for some openings on the Planning Commission. Um, and I believe some of our um, other bodies, the Park Board has actually appointed their new representative already. Um, Chris Meyer will be our new Park Board rep, and so we would thank Jono a lot for his time here on the Planning Commission. We can do more formal thank yous next time because we're going to have a lot of departing commissioners um, who have uh, served on the Planning Commission for many years and added a lot of value to this body. So um, we will do that next time. And... Um, at that time, maybe we'll have more to report. I think the school board has their annual meeting tomorrow, um, so they will be making their appointment as well. Very good. Thank you very much. And with that, we will adjourn this meeting.